Hey beautiful people of the internet, my name is Ryan, and yes, I know it is a Sunday. If you were hoping for any semblance of a schedule for these videos, after the craziness of the last three to four weeks, organization, I laugh in the face of organization, ha ha ha. In all seriousness, I will keep releasing videos on Mondays, but also there are going to be some extra videos, like today, because I have a lot of catching up to do. So, Lolita, how do you talk about a book this classic, this influential, in new interesting ways? Is it even possible to make content about a book like this and not just keep repeating what people have been saying for the last 60 or so years? Well, we're gonna try! This review of Nabokov's Lolita comes to you in three parts without any spoilers. Disclaimer, I recognize I'm going to pronounce Nabokov in the English way about a thousand times in this video because, frankly, it's been ingrained in my brain that way. And also, there are maybe about a thousand things that I can think of more interesting to talk about in this video. So, let's do it! Alrighty, first, the basics about the book. Lolita is the most read, most well-known book by Vladimir Nabokov. It's the story of our narrator Humbert Humbert, a old European man who lives in America and who, after never quite getting over a childhood love, seeks out girls of a certain young age and nymph-like demeanor, including one Dolores Hayes, aka Dolly, aka Lola, or Lo, or even Lolita. Lolita as a book was published across kind of the last half of the 1950s as it was controversial and moved from country to country. Why was it controversial, you ask? Let's be honest, no one asks that question. We know that it was controversial because it was a borderline erotic novel about an old man and his sexual and romantic feelings toward a 12-year-old girl. Okay, hold the phone though, because that sentence that I just said has a lot of nuance to it, so let's talk about it for a second. One, borderline erotic, because this is a novel that very consciously walks the thin line between high art and erotic literature. Two is sexual and romantic. To say that Humbert Humbert only felt sexually attracted to Lolita would be to discount the massive complexity of his character. Three is feeling toward a 12-year-old girl. Toward. There's a one-directionality there, and we need to remember this key fact, that we never get to see the real Lolita, the real Dolores Hayes but only the version of her as told to us by Humbert. Okay, so when reviewing this book, there are a number of things that almost every reviewer does, for good reason. They read that famous first passage aloud, or they talk about the basic device of an unreliable narrator who is so eloquent that you can't help but empathize with him, and or they explain the whole nymphit thing, which is also explained in the book. But this is a novel that you're going to be hearing about for the rest of your life, so I'm going to avoid all of that here and just say that all that information is available to you in spades in other places. Instead, I'm going to move on to the second part of this review, my personal reaction to the book, so that I can hopefully give you something new to think about. So I spent this last year, my first year in a creative writing program, hearing every single professor and most of my fellow students talk about this book. There are a few obvious reasons for that. First, the prose is like something alive in the way that it morphs on the page, words literally rearranging themselves into anagrams in front of your eyes. Second, you would be hard pressed to find a book that is more in conversation with big writers, like I have a list uh, somewhere over here of authors that the book engages with. Poe, Joyce, T.S. Eliot, Flaubert, Proust, Baudelaire, you get the picture. And third, and maybe most obvious, Lolita as a book absorbed American culture, digested it, and then proceeded to spit it back out and change everything. I mean, a significant portion of Lana Del Rey's persona in the, like, Born to Die era is indebted to Lolita, and people cannot stop talking about how American that album is. Lolita has its hands in everything in pop culture. And those are all great reasons to love the book, but the conversation that I had about this book that I most remember isn't about any of that. The fact of the matter is that Lolita as a book is risky. It risks alienating the reader. You as the reader don't want to feel as Humbert feels, and so you ask the question, is this really necessary? Is it really necessary that I see Lolita through Humbert's eyes, through his first-person, confessional, adoring narration? And that moment, the moment that you ask Vladimir Nabokov whether or not he could have made the novel more tame, is the moment that he has you. This is what Lolita is about for me, how Nabokov makes you walk this thin ridge line between two valleys. On one side is the hypothetical version of Lolita that devolves into a sick, twisted, violent book that is just violent for its own sake. It takes your effort and it doesn't reward you in the way that only fiction can reward you, with emotional experiences that can only happen on the page. On the other side is the other hypothetical version of Lolita, where Nabokov takes it easy on you, where he doesn't ask for your effort, where he doesn't ask you to do the hard work of seeing the entire complicated situation around Humbert Humbert. But he still tries to reward you, he still tries to give you the answer without you having done the work, and so you're left with this aftertaste of, like, processed sugar. Either of these valleys is a worse novel, although in very different ways. Lolita, in my opinion at least, almost perfectly walks that ridge line between the two, and that is why it is such a good book. Because it keeps making the case for art that is not tame. Third and finally, should you read the book? 
I am going to trust that I've explained myself here and keep it short because your time is valuable. Yes. Th 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 that's all, folks. Thanks for sticking with me in this video and for stopping by the channel. I am going to have, shocker, another brand new book review for you guys tomorrow. Basically, my entire weekend is making these videos now, but I am enjoying myself, and uh, I hope y'all are enjoying it too. Also, a quick announcement. This upcoming week, I am going to be organizing a time for us uh, to all get together and talk books on Reddit. So you should probably go over to my Twitter for announcements about that. And that is really all that I've got. Best wishes! Hello all you beautiful people, welcome to the internet. My name is Ryan and I'll be your host for today's episode of Let's All Have Our Brains Destroyed by David Foster Wallace, aka my book review of his first novel, The Broom of the System. So quick fact for you, this copy of Lolita, despite the fact that it is uh, falling apart a little bit, is very special to me. This is a used copy that was on the bookshelf of one of my favorite uh, undergrad professors for a very long time and then ended up in my hands. There is nothing quite as special as reading the annotations uh, in a situation like this.